Hey everybody, how you keeping? Great to be back with you. I've got a really cool surprise today. My dear friend, my senior assistant, Joey, has agreed to take us through an in-service on snatch that gauntlet back from the many jaws of death in the compost heap. Now, in the past, you've heard me talk about the fact that yeah, maybe after a couple of three years, a gauntlet's seen better days and we have to bite the bullet and, and undertake the almost criminal act of shredding the leather up and throwing it at the bottom of our compost heap. Now, for practical purposes, this might not always be the best idea for us financially, especially with the overarching issue that has affected almost everybody this year. It might be that you don't really have the dosh to be throwing at a new gauntlet. So what's the answer? Well, Joey's gonna walk us through it He's going to show us the steps that he takes and give us the benefit of his, of his insights and knowledge because he's done this for me many, many times over 11 years. Oh my God, has it been 11 years already? You weren't even a twinkle in your daddy's eye when I met Mr. Joey. That's right, you weren't. You weren't even a thought in his mind. It's true, he wasn't. So, <laughs> it, <laughs> So Joey's going to walk us through that, and I should say that this particular glove that Joey's going to work on uh, is a little older than normal for us. Um, normally I don't keep them, unless they're in really good repair, I don't normally keep them more than three or four years. This particular glove was left in a corner for other people to deal with which kind of hints at the answer to the question you're going to hear Joey ask sort of early on in his in-service. And uh, we might touch on it at a different time in more detail. But for now, why don't we just walk over, we'll have a cup of tea, coffee, maybe a tin of pop. No, no more tidbits for you. He's already had his tidbits. He doesn't need any more tidbits. <laughs> Not today. <laughs> And we'll, uh, we'll have Joey take us through the process. Now, one of the things I'm really interested to hear about is I'd like to hear from masters and maybe some high-level intermediate falconers who are mentoring young people or new people that have come to the art form. What are your steps that you walk through on a daily basis, etc., for keeping your gauntlets in good repair? And what kinds of things, like what types of leather conditioner do you prefer to use? What sorts of things have you sort of found wanting? And what kinds of, of products have you found that are just awesome and you want other people to know about them? Questions and comments down below, guys, as always. And here's my email address. Joey has said that uh, if any of you have a, have a question for him that you want some more detail to what he talks about today, then forward, forward me an email. I'll forward it on to him, he'll get back to us. Sound good? All right, so with it, without further ado, <laughs> why don't we just crack on? <laughs> All right, so what's up guys? Um, I'm here to follow the commands of Falcon 1 and teach you guys about saving a gauntlet. Um, if it's been become particularly disgusting, uh, which this one had at one point. Uh, Joe was seriously considering just throwing it out and I was in agreement because <laughs> it was basically this putrefied crustaceous claw. It was freaking gross. Uh, this is after two hours of cleaning, what you're looking at here. And it actually now articulates a bit, which is very nice. Um, not really sure how that happened in the first place with one of our gloves, given that typically I'm the one to clean them, but um, it, it is what it is. So, um, you may know that sometimes uh, Joe wanted me to say that uh, talking about throwing leather gloves or gauntlets out can be uh, apparently a tragic experience. Um, not one that I've ever had to go through because I take care of mine. Um, but basically, uh, to avoid doing that, having to throw them out, um, we're here to go over cleaning some of these things and maintaining them to uh, to a functional capacity. So what you're looking at here, this glove is uh, after two hours, a little over actually, two hours of cleaning. 
and preparing. You can see there's certain spots where I just straight up ignored it because this will come off easy. And this right in here, all of this, this glove had zero articulation. It wasn't bending at all. And now you can actually see that it does a little bit, which is nice. Same thing with the, the index or your first digit. Second and third uh, digits, these two were basically just like, <laughs> just like live long and prosper. The last thing you want is to have an animal or a companion, a friend of yours, to be as beautiful and magnificent as they are here on your glove, and yet the glove still manages to pull attention to it because of how grotesque it is comparatively. Um, don't let that happen, please. <laughs> just, just don't do it. But yeah, so here we are. Let's go over some of the things. Uh, this is basically all the gear you're gonna need. I actually have more out here than I would normally have, and normally I would do this by the sink, so I wouldn't even need the water. Um, but uh, yeah, so tend to wear the glove because that gives me an idea of uh, where things are and how I want it to move, what needs the work done, like in here and in here. Um, so yeah, let's go over some of the things you'll need. You'll, you will need some water. A bit of warmer water tends to help a little bit, breaks things down. Um, wire brush is like, this is your number one when it comes to cleaning your gauntlets and keeping them in good shape. Most people that I've talked to uh, or heard of, of doing similar work like this said don't use this because it destroys the leather. Well, just because you can destroy leather with this doesn't mean that you should, right? You'll notice I also got a long and narrow one. We used to use one uh, when Joe was, uh, when I was first starting out with Joe, we had a big kind of like brick shaped one and uh, that one was good, but if you want to actually get in there and clean without causing any collateral damage to your glove, these narrow ones are awesome because you can literally get right in on top of those seams and just like get them out of there. Or scrape, scrape the gore off, off of it. Um, what I tend to do is I tend, like leather has a grain, right? It's got a direction that it flows in. When you can, you want to try to do that. Um, if you can't, then what you want to do is you want to follow the, the creases that your fingers have made in the leather. So it's kind of following the same concept. What I do lightly is I go along the uh, the creases in here trying to get the the heads of the leather of the the metal wires to go through the crease and actually scrape out and bite off the the nasty gore. This is one of those scenarios where you want to try to do something like this outside because what you end up doing is turning all of the uh, dried up and crusted on gore into a fine powder. So, um, you know, you'll be digging that out of your nose later if you do it inside. So try to do it outside if you can, or at least in a space where you're not gonna be stuck breathing it in. One of the other reasons why you wanna try to keep these things as clean as you possibly can, and here, zoom in on this, you can see actually where it's in just that little bit of action that I've done. Um, I've scraped off entire chunks and layers, and you can see the direction that it's been it's been moving it, right? So when you get that, it's very easy to simply just go on top of it, again, very lightly. And if you look at what we've done in this amount of time, you can already see just the bits are, it's coming off, right? It's not that hard. It's, it really is that easy, guys. And you don't, like, I'm not, I'm not pressing this straight into, I'm not like trying to grate the face of this glove off. I'm literally just trying to lift little bits of the gore off. It doesn't take a lot of power. It doesn't take a lot of, might to do this, just a bit of attention, right? Oh yeah, and the other reason why I have the the water and this fancy little scrub here is be, this is by the way um, soaked with an antibacterial soap, right? Um, I try to avoid putting soap directly on the gauntlet uh, just because it's a base material and it will actually dry your leather up. But um, yeah, get some, get some soap on, on a material or surface that you're gonna scrub. Sometimes a uh, paper towel will do the trick if it's not as disgusting as this. Um, but this has a bit more vigor to its, to its brush and scrape, so that's why I chose this one. Um, one time, actually, the, uh, the coarseness of this brush was all I needed to clean one of our gauntlets, which was, you know, a fraction as dirty as this, but inside of 20 minutes, I could use this softer material to do a full full clean of one of our gauntlets. But yeah, when you get things a little bit damp or a little bit wet, moist, um, that can help soften up the gore. And uh, as long as you're not kind of like cr 
crushing it into the leather. You'll notice I'm being very light and just sort of like moving things along. That will often lift and draw a bunch of the, uh, the dried on gore or the dust and the nastiness. Kind of gives it a bit of a um, uh, texture to it that allows you to physically just remove it and just scrape it off. Uh, so once it's softened up some of the nastier bits of gore, we get back in there with the, uh, the wire brush. And you'll notice I'm not doing like uh, back and forth or like hard circles. I'm literally choosing a direction and lightly just kind of like lifting stuff off of the leather. I'm not going unidirectional all the time, right? See, I'm changing and going in different directions because sometimes you got to lift the, the crusty nastiness off the fingers and off the, uh, off the leather from a certain direction. If I was doing the harder, more intense scrubbing, that's, that's when you want to try to see a, a, a direction following the grain of the leather, following the grain of the, uh, the fingers and the creases. But for these lighter surfaces, it doesn't, it doesn't really matter which direction you go in. Whatever gets the gore off. And sometimes you got to get in there with your own, your own gear and clean it off with your fingernail. So make sure you're washing your hands afterwards because last week's meal will get stuck under your fingernails. Right, and so this is gonna take a little more effort because of how ancient and crusted on this disgustingness is, but Get in there and I'll show you what it looks like. And I mean, we haven't been doing a ton of work yet on this glove, mostly because I'm talking and I'm distracted because it does take a bit of attention because you don't want to rip your leather apart, you don't want to damage it, and you do want to get this clean and you don't want to be doing this forever. You know, you want to kind of move on with your day, especially now that you're done with the team. Um, but already, take a look at this table. Um, that's, what we're, that's what we've taken off this glove. And that's just off the distal digit of the, the fourth finger, right? Like, that's a lot of gear already that you're scraping off. Um, and that's not really the kind of stuff you want your team sitting on or your team eating from, because if this gets into your bird's food, it's not, well, it's not optimal. So yeah, that's what I'm trying to do, is I'm trying to get all that stuff in there out and the really enjoyable part is now that it's damp, you can feel how sticky and gooshy it is. Um, but this stuff, all that needs to come out of there. That's just fantastic. So here, when you're working in those tougher to get spots, that's when I take my fingers out and we kind of change the landscape a little bit. giving myself a nice easy access to everything in there. And for those of you who are um, interested in helping out or you're an assistant for someone who has their own team or you're helping out with a, a facility like a, a wildlife reserve of some sort or some sort of rehabilitative center or anything like that. It's things like this, knowing how to do stuff like this and being willing to do stuff like this, uh, doing it properly. That's the kind of stuff that's going to get you uh, noticed and, um, you know, a call from them a week later saying, uh, when did you want to come back in? Uh, that's this stuff is easy to do, it's not hard, um, and it does make a difference in terms of uh, longevity, longevity of gear and creating a good relationship with people because this stuff needs to get done and really no one wants to do it. Um, and the better you get at it, the more you can um, do it and make a video about it and talk to people you've never met without having to uh, be too distracted and too focused on actually getting the task itself done. Um, a lot of the times what I'll do is uh, Joe and I will sit down after a day of work and I'll be watching a movie while I'm doing this. I know, I said earlier, don't do this inside. Do it somewhere where you can breathe so you're not getting all this crap in the air and all that jazz. But guess what? The thing is, I'm typically doing this often enough that it's not such an ordeal. It's not so disgusting. It's not going to take a ton of work. I can get it done in 20 minutes easily while not having to focus on it directly. Uh, check this out. 
right? See what that looks like now? It's not hard. So some of these grooves here, it looks like I've ripped the leather apart, uh, and to some degree I actually have, but you need to remember this glove is about seven years old, six or seven years old, something like that. Um, uh, but yeah, having, having some of these grooves in place uh, it's going to make it easier to simply roll the, the gore and the nastiness out of there. Uh, again, changing the, changing the battlefield a little bit, giving me an opportunity to get in there. Uh, just coming from the place of wanting to maintain this, keeping it nice and clean, uh, looking good, feeling good. There's been plenty of times where we've had people, usually it's kids, younger people, um, and you, you give them a glove to go work with the birds and suddenly they're like, you know what, I don't need to work with the bird, that glove's disgusting, I don't want to put my hand in that. And you can't really blame them if it's that bad. Um, and that's the other thing too, I know that a lot of people do, uh, they've got their working glove and then they've got their like demonstration glove or their pretty glove. Um, we do that too. Uh, but your working glove really... I mean, yeah, you can be a bit rougher with it to keep it cleaner, but, you know, obviously the less care you put into it, the, the shorter its lifespan is going to be. And that's fine. Maybe that's fine. Maybe you want your working glove to just be kind of like the demo glove, the glove that you don't care about, that you can just do your regular daily routine with and move on from there. Uh, we do the same thing. We still take care of it. We still look after our gloves. Well, maybe not this one until now, but... Um, yeah, we, we do we do that we do that too. We have kind of our throwaway gloves or our well whatever it's a working glove, um, and then you know you've got the master's glove that if too much sunlight hits it, you know you have to rush it off to its case and protect it and recondition it. Um, but uh, oh, caught myself. Got to be careful with the wire brushes. Um, you still want to take care of those working gloves because if you're constantly replacing them, it's um, it's unnecessary. And the other thing too is that means your glove is dirty and disgusting. And if it's your working glove, that's the glove that your birds are gonna or your team is gonna spend most of your, most of its time on, most of its time interacting with. So really, your working glove should actually be one of the cleaner gloves. Um, Maybe not the best looking glove, but at least one of the cleaner gloves because it's the one that everyone spends their time interacting with. Yeah, here we go. the fun part. Most of my clients uh, that I that I work with professionally know that I do this and know when I go away because I have to cancel some of them to come up here and work with Joe. So if any of you guys end up seeing this video, yes, these are the same hands that work on you. Another reason why I love this thing is the little metal spike. Most people don't use it because they're terrified of hurting their, their gloves, but yeah, come check it out. See in here, all that stuff? Look at that. Super easy. Yeah, you gotta be careful, you don't wanna hurt the leather, but when you've been doing this for a while, you can get in there and 
two or three minutes worth of scrubbing and scraping is done in enough time it takes for me to show you how to do it. And you can actually see the different layers of gore on the finger right in there. Look at that. That's gross. <laughs> so yeah, you want to try to loosen that stuff up as much as you can. And once it's loosened up, get a little bit of water, a little bit of that antibacterial soap in there. Not a lot, right? And just do what you can. You can see all the, it's already coming up. This might need to be run out a little bit, so it is probably a good thing I have this much water here. So yeah, again, normally I wouldn't be getting the glove this damp. Normally I wouldn't be being like quite as vigorous or as rough with it. But again, this glove is six to seven years old and uh, very narrowly got thrown out because of how awful it was. Uh, I know I keep saying that it, because it really was. It actually was gross. Like you could hear, it was like clack, clack. Like it was so bad, guys. Um, so... I'm kind of being a bit more aggressive and a bit more abrasive than I would normally be, but then normally the gloves would be a bit fresher and normally the gloves wouldn't be nearly as bad, right? Um, but that being said, um, especially if it's not your glove, uh, you can be a little bit rougher with it than you uh, might expect. The leather's pretty tough. Um, and I don't actually mean that, especially if it's not your glove. You should, if it's your glove, you can treat it however you want. Um, but if it's someone else's glove, you should take care, right? This is the seam right in here, so I'm not compromising the integrity of the glove at all. I'm simply getting in there and removing as much as I can from what got stuffed in there. Uh, once you've got a bunch of it out, like all of that stuff, you can get in there with the brush. That much is really only super important for any of your gloves that might have that reinforcement that I was talking about. Otherwise, it's usually just the single seam around the sides. And we've actually already done most of that um, for this glove. This is a working glove, so again, you don't have to be very gentle with it. You just gotta get in there and get it clean because hygiene is very important. One of the things I was going to say before is um, this is especially important if you have a limited amount of gloves that you work with and one of your guys um, is uh, like say fighting an infection or you're concerned for something along those lines in terms of cleanliness, hygiene or, or health reasons. 
typically what we did because I don't know how much uh, you guys might know or remember about Saber but he was fighting an infection for quite a while and our answer to that was to simply have more than one glove and so we had a glove that we worked with for Saber and Saber only and then we had other gloves that were for kind of like the rest of the team. And uh, basically, um, if you are a falconer, um, a like a new falconer, someone who's kind of fresh to the scene, because all all you masters and all you you more experienced guys are gonna have like an armory of gauntlets and leather for sure. But if you're starting out, um, and you've only got one or two gloves, that needs to change. <laughs> get get more. Uh, because in the event that you need to take into consideration things like cleanliness and hygiene, then you can do that. You can dedicate one glove to so-and-so and one glove to another. And uh, if you have one glove that is just too dirty and you're a little too maxed out in terms of uh, your demand and you'll, you'll get to it later because that happens, then you don't have to continue to use something that's disgusting. You can put it aside and just put it on your to-do list later or get one of your assistants to do it. Or if you are an assistant and you're watching this and you see that's happening, well, here's an opportunity to be a golden child. Uh, save the day. Something that simple really can make a huge difference. Uh, but okay, so we'll do a quick brush, get the rest of whatever loose bits we can off of here, and we'll try to revitalize this thing with our um, my favorite stuff, the leather conditioner. it. If this was a fresh glove, I probably would have put even more time into this, but at this point we're already looking at, um, what would that be, two and three quarters hours work on this thing. Uh, and like I said, it's this is, this is the one that we used to like beat up and one that we were considering replacing. So um, doing this with you guys has just resurrected uh, what we initially thought might have been a lost cause. And honestly, I took it on as a bit of a personal challenge. It kind of was like, well, let's see what I can do. Um, but uh, yeah, we'll just start conditioning it because yeah, there's always more work to do. But yeah, this is the part of it that can be easy and relaxing. This is the part where you can really start to enjoy the movie if you're, if you're doing this in front of a movie or Netflixing. Main thing here is uh, you can get lots of conditioner. I'm use, I used a fraction just now of what I'm going to use ultimately. You can see where there's creases where it needs to be kind of like rubbed in. It really needs to get massaged in there, kneaded in, flex the leather, move it around. This is the part where you can just sort of like, <laughs> just go to town. Um, yeah, you can use lots. What I tend to do is I try to spread it out evenly just to save my fingers the work of having to like crush and move it along a lot. But yeah, it's not that hard, right? That's the first layer, the, the simple bit. You get that nice sheen to the point that it almost feels like it's slippery or goopy, right? You can see that I'm leaving little bits along. It's coming up against my finger there, right? That's fine. We'll, we'll push that in later. We just want to get it on the glove and let it start soaking all that stuff in.
Now depending on whose equipment or materials you're using, like if you're at a facility, they might have a limited amount of this that you can use. Thankfully, this is all ours, and um, really, I could just I can just go crazy if I wanted to. And sometimes I do, and I probably will for this glove. There's probably going to be a lot of conditioner used, um, but you do want to consider that if if you're at someone else's place, and maybe if you're new there, or uh, you've got a limited amount of conditioner or materials to, to use on this stuff, then you might have to think ahead and spread it out um, as evenly as you can. I'm doing that naturally anyways, just to sort of get like the bulk of the work kind of done uh, before I get into the specifics of it. But um, be considerate, don't just use up everyone's conditioner on one glove at the, at the facility and then they have to go get more sort of check in on that sort of stuff before you get started. I think for the most part though people will just say yeah I go crazy and so you should. And this is the part where having your hand in the glove really helps because you can start to feel like okay where, where do I need it so like I can tell I really need lots in here and in here because it's stiff or how it moves. And don't worry about getting it on your fingers or anything like that. This will, this is good for you too. Use the whole hand if you need to. You don't want to get tired because after a while, especially if you're not used to it. I'm a manual therapist, so my hands are pretty tough. But after a bit, you'll feel your fingers start to cramp if you're really trying to push all this stuff in. You're not, you're not really used to it. So use, use multiple fingers. Use your knuckles if you need to. If you're just doing one finger all the time like this, you're gonna burn out. Really get in there. You can see my hand, it's, it's all the way down to my knuckles in here, like it's all over my fingers. So just go crazy, get it in there. Otherwise you'll be at it forever and you'll be tired afterwards and you'll hate doing this. So this is the kind of stuff I was talking about where you'll feel where you need it, right? Like right in here. You can see it bunches up in the creases and all that. That's fine too. Push it in there, get it underneath the crease, get everything. And that's the reason why it was so important like earlier when I was doing all that stuff in between in here. That's why you want to get that crap out of there because then when you're putting this, this conditioner on, it goes in and it actually will fill in that space and it keeps the, it'll actually protect your seam more. It will give you more life out of that seam. And don't throw your glove away just because you got one or two holes in it unless they're in like particularly choice bad locations. So with the scenarios where you've got some like gaps or holes, usually it would show up kind of in here. Cause again, like I was saying before, this is the soft stuff. And often what ends up happening is cause that's where it all bunches up. If you're not cleaning your glove regularly in here, it gets dried and crusty, it cracks, it snaps, it opens up. Uh, or if you're using stronger, tougher um, animals uh, that have that grip strength to be able to penetrate the glove, uh, it, it happens. But you don't have to immediately throw your glove away just because of that. You can um, get in there and do some repairs. It's really not that hard. Some basic sewing skills will save you lots of heartache and potentially blood loss. Um, and we've done that. Um, uh, ourselves, uh, I've gone in there and, and sewn it up. I don't personally bother doing any of the sewing stuff until after all this work is done. Once the leather is softened up and you've done a lot of cleaning and you know you realize, okay, let's let's just get in there and do the full thing. Um, but yeah, it's it's worth it to to do that because it, it will save you and it'll pre prevent you from having to buy a new glove entirely.
Oh yeah, there we go. Really get it in there, guys. Um, all the creases, all the bits. Push it in, knead it in. There's a bit of a junction on this particular glove. You see the seam coming up into here, seams coming down in here, and then one in the middle there. So there's a lot of activity in there. Just get like a big, I'm not gonna do it now because I just did, but I'll show you. Get like a big gob and just push it in there. Once you've got the whole glove saturated and conditioned and in in good form, that's where you just spend the rest of your time massaging it in, kneading it in there. You don't want your glove when you're done or your gauntlet when you're done conditioning it to be slimy. You don't want it to collect a bunch of uh, dirt and dust and stuff like that after you've spent so much time and effort cleaning it. But once you've got all of your conditioner in and on it in place and set up that's where you just spend some time doing your evil villain thing um, keep massaging it in there and wait and you just keep doing this until you get that that kind of grip of okay it's it's all in there now it's all gone it's not surface level uh, goop you want it to be in the leather And if you're uh, someone who's in charge of a number of assistants or helpers, you can turn this into a um, sort of for fun competition. Everyone can hang out with their own gauntlet that they've worked with today and they get the honor of cleaning and conditioning it for the next person or for next week's thing. You can hang out and talk about all the awesome things you've done, watch a movie together, whatever, but give each person their own their own glove, it'll give them something to kind of be proud of, taking care of their own gear or whatever, but I don't know. I'm not exactly a huge fan of cleaning the gauntlets. It's not like I look forward to it. I don't thank the stars that, okay, today I get to clean gauntlets. Um, but when it's done, it is pretty rewarding when you know you've done a good job, especially with a glove that previously we were even considering throwing out and after some dedication bit of love TLC you can get it to a point where the glove is basically brand new again it's uh, very rewarding and I know that for myself, when I was working with Joe early days, which was forever ago now, for those of you who are starting out with uh, someone else's animals, you, uh, you, you shine a bit more when you can do stuff like this, when you actually kind of care a bit, put some effort into it. Pretty good. Try that out.